All right, we're gonna do the top cap here. Let's call them laying on the ground here. So pulleys are gonna go down. Let's set it in here first. We we'll use four of the large pinch and quarter long bolts that are included here. So it's going to serve to hold the top of the cylinder in place and then also support the top bar that's going to go from one side of it to the other where our hydraulic hose and equalization cables are going to cross. So that will mount to this flange here. Take our pin, put our spacer on there. It's going to fill this hole in here, keep it up. And send the other side spacer into the hole first, and then the washer, and we're going to put the uh, snap right back on. All right, so we've got our cylinder installed into the column here. Uh, next step is we're going to pull the ram out, and so we can put the nut on. So both nuts are going to go below the carriage. So we're going to use the nut on there just to get it started pull out. Make sure you've got the cap off of each of the ports. The air port at the top of the cylinder and off the hydraulic line. That'll let air enter it. And then you can just grip the cylinder and slide out. And we're going to take it all the way down to the base of the carriage. See, we've got a ram through there here, through this. We've got to slide a little more. We'll put those two nuts on there. Yep. And you're gonna have two nuts. There's the main nut and then a thinner jam nut. The jam nut is just to keep it locked in place. So the large nut goes on first. Tighten that up tight with a socket here. Then we'll do the same thing with this jam nut and lock those two together using a wrench through the base of the column. Here. to drill all the way through the concrete if you're six to seven inches or less. 
Um, and what that allows for is if you ever want to take a lift down or move the lift, you can always pound the anchors down flush with the floor. Um, because once you put these anchors in, the way they're designed to wedge out, they're almost impossible to get out. So drilling all the way down through will also let the debris fall to the bottom of the floor, the bottom of the hole, uh, and allows you to get the anchor all the way down flush with the lift. So now that we've drilled the holes, make sure that after you get done drilling them, you take a shot back, and clean out the holes really well, get all of the debris out. You don't want any rocks or any debris that could possibly hang up on the anchors, okay? So you want to screw the nut just below the top of the, the head here on these anchors with your lock washer and your washer here. You insert the bolt hole in here. Now you want a tight fit. It is a press fit, okay? So they shouldn't slide down in there. Um, and you want to drill the holes as straight as possible. Sometimes if you get a little bit a little sloppy, then you get some slack in this and they won't be as tight a fit. So you want a pretty snug tip. So once you get them here, you want to slowly just kind of knock them down. With a decent sized hammer. Now, once you get these in, you never want to use an impact on these. You always just want to tighten them by hand, okay? Now, every lift has a little different torque spec on these, so refer to your manual for that. But hand tighten them with a wrench first, snug them down, and then torque them to the specified amount. Tools Direct 11,000 pound two post lift to go over a couple of common questions we get. Uh, so one of the things is on cable tightness. So all the two post lifts we sell are going to have cables. Uh, the cables don't do the lifting. They just make sure both sides stay equal in height. Um, so what you got is you have the cables that are passing by here. There's a cable that starts on each side and goes to the opposite side. For tightness, what you see here is you get a little bit of movement still. But if you kind of wrap your hand around those, it's pretty really a moderate amount of force. They shouldn't be able to touch about three quarters of an inch to an inch apart still. Uh, it gives you a good tension and it's going to support everything you need. up to take the pressure off the locks and by pulling this one lock handle it'll release the lock on the power unit side and this cable will go to the other side and release that lock as well so to lower this down you'll just hold your lock release handle push your lowering valve on the power unit and then you can just hold as long as you want if you want to stop slow on the way you can just hold let go of that handle and it'll lock into that next lock position
um, tubers lift here. This lift has what we call bisymmetric arms. What that means is it has an asymmetric style front arm. We see here with the wrap over the rear. It's a shorter front arm and a longer rear arm. What that allows you to do is shift the vehicle further back between the posts. So you have more room when you're opening the doors to the vehicle. And if you have a short wheelbase vehicle, it's going to make it a lot easier to position. If you've got a short wheelbase vehicle here, where the front tires are maybe in this area here, with the arm straight out, you may have to push the car forward to be able to swing the arm back. Since we're starting here with this arm to the rear, we can easily swing it from behind the front tire into position. Behind the 